practice it together, y'all. You likes music method. Welcome. Come on in, everybody. I am today bringing you, after just doing Windy and Warm, another finger-picking masterpiece. Never Going Back Again by Fleetwood Mac. Lindsey Buckingham crushes this one. It's so good. Uh, I didn't know it was going to be this hard. I know everyone always talks about this piece, but it is a hard piece. The Travis Picking playlist over here, if you're a beginner, don't start with this video. Go to another one. If you are new, new to Mike's Music Method, listen for a second. If you're an old hat, timestamps are down below. Jump ahead and skip this part. But I wanted to invite you all in. What we do here at Mike's Music Method is I tab out these songs to the best of my ability. I have a pretty good ear, gifted, put in my time. So I generate my own tabs, which are all free at mikesmusicmethod.com, and they will appear whoop, up here on the screen during the video. But if you found this video, we are going to walk through literally measure by measure. I'm going to tell you every note, which finger to play it with, how to practice it. And it is really an amazing resource here at MMM, Mike's Music Method. So welcome. We're going to walk you through it, and I'm going to encourage you the whole way. And I wanted to thank the lovely Chase for donating and sponsoring and making this song possible. More on the donation and the value for value model later. Oh, there you are. I wanted to make a half little apology to you. Not a full one, a half one. I recorded this song without the capo. I'll be honest, I forgot and just recorded the whole thing without the capo. And then I started to re-record it with the capo, but quickly realized how it's very ridiculous because if you don't have a cutaway guitar, and I know a lot of you don't, right? Some people just have a regular um, acoustic or nylon string. And so it's like almost impossible to reach up when you get to that bridge part when the capo is on four because you're on like the 14th fret or whatever it is, 13th. It's just ridiculously high. So this whole time I don't do the the capo, which usually is fine, but I'm, I'm apologizing because some of these stretches when you're in first position are really high up there and it's kind of painful. So take breaks. At the end, I do slow run throughs with the capo on the fourth fret, but for the sake of simplicity, um, also not only the bridge being way up high, but with the capo on, it's like, what do you call the 10th fret? Do you call it the sixth fret or 10? It gets confusing with the dots. So how I would go about it is practice with me without a capo as you do the tutorial. But once you learn a measure, throw the capo on four to give your wrist a break because those stretches are hard, particularly in measure five and six, but kind of all over the place. So a half apology. I think it's the high part's going to be easier to learn. And for those without the guitar, it'll be easier. But keep it in mind, there's no capo. I know that Lindsay does it on the fourth fret though, okay? And the slow run-throughs at the end of the song have capo four. Lindsay gonna keep you on your toes. So we're in drop D, that low one's just a D, and let's get used to some of these shapes before we dive in here, because we're gonna be going back and forth between them and it gets pretty confusing because the picking is so hard. So let's get these shapes out of the way. Basically, you can think of like an A bar chord here, but all the time he's putting these two fingers down that make it a D. So we got that A, then I'm putting my um, middle finger on the third fret of the second string, then my ring finger goes on the fourth fret, of the fourth string or the D string. So it becomes like an inverted D major. But then sometimes he's doing that, hammering on those. But then sometimes he has those down in the pinkies, also on the fifth fret of the highest E string. So kind of get used to that. Make sure you're really comfortable with that, that your finger's angled in the right spot. And that is basically the whole intro with a lot of hard right hand work going on as well. So let's start with measure one. We start with that D chord down, hit the sixth string, but I'm pinching four and two. And I'm doing thumb, and then I'm doing thumb in middle. Then my thumb's hitting the fifth string. Then I'm lifting that chord up, pinching four and two again, but I'm hammering from that A to the D. So I got sixth string the D chord, fifth string, lift the chord up, and hammer it right back down. So three, four. Measure two. Now we're gonna have that D chord down the whole time with our pinky added to it. Really beautiful sound, nice big D chord. Now check this out, the thumb is difficult because already we have six, four, Five, four, we got the E string, then the D, the A, and then the D. So 
we got that three note thumb pattern and this ridiculous kind of reminds me of Sligo River because um, we have like a, a three note kind of pattern going over a two it, it just ends up being really confusing and my nail is snagging on the string it's annoying me you should file them like a classical player they sit there and they file their nails perfectly all right, so anyways, let's do this very slow. Let's just look at the melody, because we did the thumb, right? Now look at the melody. We have the third string with our pointer. That's that second fret there. Then we go to the first string, fifth fret. So there I'm doing pointer, ring, middle, pointer, ring, middle, pointer. Right? So pointer, ring, middle, pointer, ring, middle, pointer. Um, and just make sure that, for that, some people, that's going to be really hard because it's hard to get that ring finger going. And I'm not even great with my ring finger, to be honest. I'm more of a folk player than a classical player. I used to be pretty good with my ring. I just don't do it as much anymore. Which is why a lot of people avoid this song, because this Lindsay can play, man. All right, now we're going to try and put it all together. Bit by bit, right? We zoom in with our microscope. I don't talk about this enough in my older videos I did, but get out your microscope. We're just gonna look at the first two thumb picks of this measure. So I'm doing six, then my pointer finger plays the G string. Then I'm pinching the D and the E, so that's four and two. And I'm doing with my thumb and my ring. So thumb on six, pointer finger on the third, pinching four and one with thumb and ring. Then my middle finger, is hitting the second string. And this might be a study piece for a really long time. And he's kind of palm muting. And again, the classical guy would not say to anchor your pinky finger there, but it's totally fine in the folk world because you're gonna have to palm mute. So that's up to you on my mood to be quite honest I'm not sure what I do <laughs> all right so let's do that really so three four try palm muted then we're gonna do the second half of the measure we're pinching, now it's thumb on the fifth string with a pointer on the third. Then we kind of follow the same thing. We do the top one with a ring finger. Let me give you a better angle. I don't know what's easier to see it here. Probably that way. So pinching five and three, ring finger on the one. Then I'm pinching four and two, that's thumb and middle. Then my pointer's alone. Now the second half of the measure, let's do this really slow. You got that first half down. We are gonna pinch five and three here with my thumb and my pointer. Then my ring finger is hitting the top string again. That pinky's still down. If you need a break, it already kind of hurts on the classical guitar <laughs> to be hanging out on this chord for too long. So we got pinch five and three. Ring finger alone up on top. And then I'm pinching four and two with thumb and middle. So the D and the B string, then my pointer's alone on the third again. So that whole second half there. Let's do it together. Three, four. And the whole measure. Two, three. Measure three, this one's a bit of a stretch, depends on your hand size, there's a few different ways you can try to tackle this. But what I'm doing here, we got six, we're starting it down on that D chord, hitting the sixth string, pinching uh, four and two, and those are both a pull off to the A. So that pinch is pulling off to the A chord, then I'm hitting the fifth string, then the third, and let's stop there for a second, get that, three, four. Now 
here we have five and five. You're, some hand, some people's hands might be big enough, and you and if you have good posture, you'll be able to move, just kind of snag that while keeping that A down. So I'm using my ring finger and my pinky to get five on the D and the B string. Now I have to lift that first finger up on this guitar, but if I had my electric right or my acoustic steel string smaller neck, I might be able to snag it. But it's okay if you have to jump to it. Now other people might still find that hard and I suppose it's okay to just bar it with one of those fingers even though you're not hitting the middle one. Like bar it with the pinky if that's easier to reach. So I would experiment with that. My gut tells me to do that but I'm always amazed how people find it way easier to do it a different way. So that's okay if you're gonna do it that way. So let's do the whole measure. Three, four. Measure four, we're back to the D chord with that pinky down. So here we're pinching six and two, so a bit of a different pattern here. Six and two, thumb and middle. So for this song, I didn't even say, but every time it's ring fingers here, middle fingers on the second, pointer fingers on the third string. So I'm always keeping those lined up, at least for this main verse part. So one more time, we got six and two. Then it's four and one with thumb and ring. Then after that, we're hitting the second string with our middle finger. Then the second half of the measure, I'm doing five and three, A and G. Then the ring finger's on the top string. Then it's the D and the B, so four and two. I know I'm always giving these examples at a certain speed. By no means do I expect you to have it at that speed already, right? <laughs> that takes a long time, but I like to give slow examples so you can hear the entire thing. And maybe that measure takes you a week, or if you're more of a beginner, that measure might take you three weeks to get down. So don't get frustrated if I show it to you and then I play it and you're like, why can't I do it? you shouldn't be able to do it, all right? Because if you could learn that measure that quick, you should clearly be teaching these uh, lessons and not me, right? A lot of hard work goes into this stuff. I should remind people more. I've been playing since I was 10. I'm almost 40. That's 30 years. That's a long time of guitar playing. So even if it's a measure I haven't seen, I'm gonna learn it a lot quicker than you are. And I have seen this measure and I've practiced this song. So don't worry if you're just like, what, this is impossible. Yeah, this, this song is pretty much near impossible. <laughs> That's why there's very few guitar players who can do it. It's a very difficult song. You're, you're not going to get it overnight. So don't get frustrated. Go very slow. Even if you only learn like two or three or four measures early on in your journey, it's still going to make you a really good guitar player because this picking stuff is awesome. So keep at it. Go slow. Don't get discouraged. Measure five. <laughs> now, I, told, I know I told you in measure three, that um, you're okay playing that chord in a different way. And I suggested that because it's a really fast transition. However, in this one, you do need to anchor that down. And again, pay attention to posture. I should probably have this guitar on my left leg, have my footstool out, which I don't because it's over there in the corner and I'm lazy. Um, I'll get it in a minute maybe. But you want this left wrist to be straight. Notice I'm tucking my elbow so I don't have to like bend my wrist like that, right? You don't want carpal tunnel. So the higher that is, the easier it is to keep that wrist straight and reach that chord, okay? Um, so here it's that A chord, but I also have that five and that five down. So in other words, from the ground up, it's two, five, two, five, right? So you have to bar those twos and get those pinkies like that. Really ridiculous and hard to get it clean. I feel like a beginner on this nylon string because it's a wider neck and it's really hard to get. But that's what we're going for. Again, ground up, second fret, fifth fret with a pinky, second fret, fifth fret with my ring finger. All right, that is it. Let's try it. Really cool though. 
And in, in here we only have a um, two string thumb pattern. It's just five, four, five, four. And let's try it. We're pinching five and one. So again, of course, it's the ring finger here. Then it's the middle finger alone. Then I'm pinching four and three, thumb and pointer. Then I'm adding the ring finger again on top. So that's the first half of the measure. second half of the measure, I'm pinching five and two. That's the third string alone, the pointer. Then I'm pinching four and one, thumb and ring. Then the second string with my middle. So the second half of the measure there, three, four. And the whole thing together, three, four. Why am I putting myself through playing this on an nylon? <sighs> Measure six, we just keep running through that pattern. Again, it looks funny because that three note pattern is happening over a, a four note, you know, or a two note. It's like two over three, so it, it's um, got that mesmerizing cool effect here, that cascading sound. So in measure six, we pinch five and three, then immediately the ring finger. Then I'm pinching four and two. And then immediately the third string with my pointer. Then we do the second half of the measure, pinching five and one. Then it's a second string in the middle, pinching four and three. Back to the ring finger. Measure seven. We're almost done with this whole intro, and this is like the bulk of the song here. Uh, we're, we are doing back to that D chord, but then we have this cool movement here. And I am not sure the best way to do this. So again, we're going to talk about a few different ways that you can approach this measure because it's tricky. So we start in that D chord, right? It's not that when I put these fingers down. We don't need our pinkies, so you can relax a little bit. <laughs> um, that's the beginning of it. Pinching six and two. Pointer goes to the third string. Thumb goes on the fourth. Easy enough. Now check this second half of the measure out here. We're hearing this. But the question is, on those beats, it's which fingers to use in the right hand. So that five and five, it, it's kind of like it would be an and beat, which would be like a pointer finger. But the problem is that we don't just have one. We want to hit both of these fives, right? And we can lift up the chord here. We're doing both of these fives like we did those previous measures, five and five. Now, what you can do is, is deaden that third string. And I'm doing that by just letting my ring finger, instead of being perfectly, like, don't do perfect form, I'm allowing you to drop it down so that third string is muted. So I can use this big up with my index, a big brush, to hit the second string, the third is muted, and the fourth. So that would look like this. <laughs> I farted out. And it slides to the sevens. So that's one way to do it. We'll finish the measure in a second, I promise. The other way is to pinch with thumb in, in middle. Now the reason that's weird is because one and two and we don't usually, when we're Travis picking, we don't usually have the thumb on the and beat, but it's totally fine. I mean, Doc Watson does it sometimes. We're just breaking that pattern. For me, you can do it. It's just make sure you practice it a bunch where you're doubling up on the thumb. So see if that feels better, pinching it, or the way we just did it. Or you're brushing with the index finger. 
So two options there. But now note this, after we hit those, we're sliding up to seven. But the second we hit that seven, we're at the top of the slide, I'm also using my thumb to hit the fifth string. So I'm just hitting the fifth string. So there's brushing it with the index and the thumb on the fifth string at the same time as a slide. Or if you're pinching, practice with the pinch. And then we just go back down to five and five. And there I am pinching thumb and middle because it's a basic downbeat. Right? That's like the Travis pick there, open on the fifth and pinching the fives. So real slow, three, four, Both ways are fine. I don't know what Lindsay is doing. Um, there are some live versions, but I couldn't quite exactly catch his right hand. You know, it's not like zoomed in at that part, at least not that I found. If anyone can catch Lindsay doing it live, where you actually see his right hand during that part, I would love to see it. Link me. Measure eight, finally a sparse little moment in here. We go back to the D chord. And it's just that. So it's a D chord with the pinky now, but I'm doing six and two. And a little break there, then it just goes to the thumb on four. So no fancy melody work there, just a pinch and the thumb alone. But then we go to the ring finger on the top string. Second half of the measure is just five, three, four. Thumb, pointer, thumb. So three, four. Boom! You did the verse. Use the timestamps down below. At the end of this song, there will be slow run-throughs of each of these sections. Guys, that's plenty. Stop, you know, take a break, bookmark this video, come back later. Um, oh, now's the time to sub and like. I never tell people to do that, so sub, hit the like button. It supposedly does great things for the algorithm, and then I'll be famous one day. Yay, look at me! Uh, but sub and like. This, share this content if you're getting value from it. The other thing is feel free to join the Discord. The links are down below because that's a great way to stay in touch. If you have questions, um, sometimes things get lost in emails. And the other cool thing about the Discord is hopefully the community builds and then I don't always have to answer your questions. There will be other good guitarists in there and we can all help each other along the way because I only have so much time in the day to answer questions and emails. But I don't stop sending them because I absolutely love your emails. And you can also send a letter to my P.O. box. So that's really cool too. And get, a, and get a free Malaro uh, family Christmas card if you donate through the P.O. box. But anyway, take a break. This is a very difficult song. It's hard for me. I've been playing for 30 years, so you're not going to get it overnight. Spend time maybe doing only four measures, some two measures at a time. Maybe you're spending a month just on one measure if you're a beginner. That's not bad, right? This is learn things before you practice that. And that's another thing I wanted to take the time to say here. What that means is don't just start be, like playing things really quick or try to play through the first eight measures. That's ridiculous. Take that first measure. Is it, am I doing everything? Economy of motion. Can I close my eyes? Can I do it without my guitar? Really imagine what I'm doing. Do I know the chords and how to play it without using my guitar as a crutch? Right? All this stuff is really valuable and you're gonna learn faster doing it this way. And then you can even make this like a study piece. You can do that on different chords. Really get that down before moving on. You get the idea. Onward. The donation pitch. Guys, if you made it this far in the video, you're clearly getting great value from the channel. And I ask you to consider the value for value model. I don't think there's many people on the internet giving this kind of detailed and accurate content for free. So I want, the, the whole thing here is I want everybody to learn. People who don't have the, the money to prioritize music are on hard times, just can't afford it now. I still want them to be able to access this video but think of it as like the honor system. Anyone who can give should give. Maybe that's 
if you're watching a bunch of my videos, maybe you're given a hundred bucks a month because otherwise you'd be doing private guitar lessons. Maybe it's 10 bucks every song you learn or maybe once in a while you think of me and go, hey, I could buy Mike a cup of coffee or throw in a, a couple bucks to get him a, a new camera or not that I'm even a fancy gear guy, but you know what I mean, keep my lights on. Keep my lights on, put some food on my table. The more you guys give in, the more time I can dedicate to making these videos, make more content, keep that content free for everybody else and just to put it out there in the internet. So that's what you're doing. It's, it's almost a charitable cause. I know it's not true charity, but you know what I mean. If you can throw me a couple bucks, then I can create all this free content for people who can't afford it to consume. And that's the value for value model. All the links are down below. A bunch of different ways to donate. The P.O. Box, the Venmo, the PayPal, the Patreon. You can become a monthly subscriber on PayPal or Patreon or whatever. You guys understand. It's the value for value. Onward with the song. All right, here is the second half of the song, kind of like the chorus or the bridge, whatever you want to call it. it starts in measure nine. The tabs are free to download at mikesmusicmethod.com. You have a big old D chord here, and it's in like the G shape. I don't know if you know about the cage system. Um, it's just one kind of mnemonic way to memorize a guitar neck. If you're interested, I have a whole video series, um, How to Get Better at Guitar. So we're in this big shape here. Basically, like think of a D bar chord, if you know this one, it's 777. Seven, seven. But we're building on that by doing 7, 7, 7, and we're adding the 10 on top. And we have the scale shape within there. But we want to get used to this. 7, 7, 7, 10. Sometimes we're going to use that 9. So get used to that idea. And then sometimes that pinky's on the second string on 10. Sometimes the middle finger's playing 8 on the second string. Right, he's using a lot of the notes in the scale. And this part is tricky, and I used my ear to the best of my ability, and there's some notes in there like, I, I still can't believe he's playing it up to speed like that. It's so busy. <laughs> um, and it doesn't sound quite as goofy as, as it is. Like, he's really putting in some funny note choices in there. So let's do this. Our thumb right off the bat has this three-note pattern. Six, four, five, four. Remember, we got the seventh fret on that fourth string, too. I'm barring all of them. So six, four, three, six, four, five, four. And let's add in the melody notes here, measure nine, pinch uh, six alone, pinching four and one. Again, it's thumb and ring. Thumbs alone on five, and then I'm immediately hitting the first string after that, but I have my ring finger on nine, so my pinky went down to the ninth fret, pinky to ring. So six, pinch, thumb alone on five, and then right to the ninth fret on that first string. Now here, it's kind of tricky, but I actually am doing the ring finger twice. That's going to be really difficult for a lot of people, and I'm not saying you have to do it that way, but right after we play that nine, we have to descend first, second, third string. So that's why I'm doing the ring twice in a row there. Ring, ring finger again. Pinch. Let's finish the measure here. We have that five to the one, that's the ninth fret. And then after that, I'm pinching four and two, but I'm putting my pinky down on the 10th fret of the second string. So it's seven and 10. And sorry, I'm out of tune. My I gotta put new strings on this thing. I've tuned it a hundred times, I promise. I'm sorry if it's driving you nuts, but I, I, it's like I have to bend it and it, whatever. I need, my intonation stinks right now. So that ending, I'm pinching four and two, but I got the 10th fret down on two. So it's seven and 10, those should both be Ds. <laughs> now my pointer finger plays the third string. So the end of the measure is that open nine. And I'm just keeping that nine down and using my pinky. So the nine is still there ringing out. That's the second half of the measure. Open nine, pinch, third string. Top three, four. Pinky, ring, pinky. To the ring, and then lift the pinky. Measure 10. So let's kind of have our hand where it was at the end of the previous measure. 
So we're there, where we got both those down. Then what we're gonna do is drop this pinky down. I suppose you could reach your ring finger, but I find it easier to drop my pinky because my pinky's now gonna play 10 and 10, while my other finger's still barring those seven. So 10, 10, seven, seven is our chord shape. Still, you know, a big D chord in the G shape, but just voicing it a little differently. It's kind of like doing the G chord like this, if you know that one where you're doing three and three. Basically, we're moving that whole shape up. And, you know, you have different fingers, but that's the idea. It's almost like if we had a temporary capo on the seventh fret, <laughs> we could just play a G chord there. Assuming we weren't drop D too. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Let's do this measure. A little bit easier. Still tricky, but a little bit way easier than the previous one. So I don't have to move any of those colors, right? I've just got that 10, 10, 7, 7. And it's all about the right hand here. Pinching 6 and 1. Then it's the second string. So 6 and 1, thumb and ring. Then it's my middle finger. Then I'm pinching 3 and 2, thumb and pointer. Then right back to the ring. That's the first half of the measure. Second half continues, thumbs on five now, pinching five and two, because it's that three note pattern, right? Six. So I'm pinching five and two, pointers alone, then I'm pinching four and one, then the middle fingers alone. So the whole measure, three, four, Again, alone, if you have to practice just the, but it's just that cascading waterfall. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Just when you thought Lindsay was done adding colors, he throws in this goofy measure 11. So it kind of starts the same as nine, but not, not, then it changes right away. So we got six alone. And here I just have the pinky on 10, that's it. So six alone, pinching four and one. Then I do five and one, but that 10 becomes a nine. And it's a pinch here, so different than measure nine was. We have thumb alone, pinch, then drop it and pinch again there. So six, four and one, then five and one, with my ring finger there. And here, let's just do that. After we do that pinch, five and one with the ninth fret, I'm putting my middle finger down on the eighth fret of the second string. <laughs> I can't believe that note is in there, but it's in there. It's really goofy. Unless I'm like hearing a ghost note, but I think he's putting that in there. And then we have the thumb on four and the pointer on three. So the second half of that measure is pinch. It's actually not that hard, but I just couldn't believe he was adding another color to this chord. So pinching, we'll do the end again. Pinch five, one, second string, thumb on four, then the pointer on three. chord shape is a stairwell, right? We've got nine, eight, seven, seven. So the whole measure, three, four, put the pinky down. Now it's easy once they're here, so it might be fairly easy to loop it because your chord's already in place. But always remember to practice maybe from a measure ahead. everything moves, right? It's not so easy coming from that previous measure from here to just a single one on 10 to putting it down to nine. A lot of goofy finger work involved in this. Again, take it slow. I know you'll get it if you go slow. Hey, look at this. 12 is the same as 10. Unbelievable. You failed, Lindsay. You accidentally repeated a measure. Loser, loser. Why didn't you make that one more complicated, huh, punk? All right, so nine repeats. We go back to nine repeat, but instead of doing 12, which was ending one, we skip 12 and we do uh, measure 13, the second ending. And almost, it's pretty much exactly the same. So luckily we get another break. We're just not adding the and because there's a little more breather. So it's just one and two and three and four. No extra middle finger there at the end. So that is the only difference. And then, unexpectedly, we go from way up here and we jump all the way down to like a B minor and things get weird.
Yeah, so this goofy guy, Lindsay, is jumping all the way down to the B minor here. We have a very weird, this part was weird too, I swear I'm hearing it right, um, but it's goofy. So we got a B minor, just regular bar chord here, hitting the fifth string, then I'm pinching four and two. Then we're moving to the ring finger is gonna get the fourth fret on the lowest sixth string there. And then I'm barring the twos here, kind of like an A chord. So I'm doing six, and then my middle finger is hitting that second string. Then my thumb is hitting the fourth, and I'm hammering from two to four. I can't tell if it's a hammer or just a clean hit. It's easier to hammer on. I don't know what he's doing in the recording. That's how I'm doing it. So five, pinch four and two, change the shape. So then it's six, two, then the thumb's hammering, two to four. Remember, I'm doing that like an A chord. So three. Four. And measure 15 continues. Still a B minor, pinching five and two. Pointers and low one on the third string. Thumbs on the fourth. And then while I'm doing that thumb on the fourth, I'm lifting my pinky to get the fifth fret on the top string. Thumb on the fourth, and then my pinky, my ring finger hits that uh, top string there. Then we go to an A chord and hammer into the D. So that A chord is five, then the third string with the pointer, five, three, then pinch four and two with thumb middle and hammer on. So the whole measure, three, four, You freaking did it. You're amazing. Yeah, Lindsay. Take that, you son of a beach. You son of a beautiful, majestic beach. We can play it too. You're not the only guy on the planet who can do it, huh? You thought you were. Oh, man. That, that sounds really good, huh? It's a really amazing picking. Hats off, Fleetwood Mac. Slow run-throughs, we got a 70 BPM kick drum, and I am doing the capo here on four. One. We're just gonna do for measure uh, one to eight. One, two, three, four. If you guys actually have the YouTube app, not only can you change the sound, right, go to the gear icon, playback settings, you can do 7.5, but if you go into the details there, it's called like, uh, I don't know, custom, I think it says, then you can do it to like 0 0.9, 0 0.95, uh, 1.05, and you, if that's too slow, go bring it up a little quicker as you get better. If it's too fast, which it probably is if you're just starting it, slow down what I did even more. And I know I'm showing you that whole part, but honestly, when I practice, you want to bust out that microscope. Maybe you're only doing the first two measures, right? Hit that back arrow on YouTube, loop the first two measures a whole bunch of times and get that going. Measure nine. Now, if you don't have a cutaway here, it's a real problem because I'm way up on 14. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, 
Hence why I didn't do it with a capo. One, two, three, four. Second ending to the B minor. Yeah, I kind of missed that a note at the end, but you guys get it. Do that a whole bunch. Do, 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 do. Fine Lindsay Buckingham. Break his fingers, why did he compose this song? Okay, I'm okay now. I'm okay. I don't have to let it out. I'll only break my microphone, not Lindsay Buckingham's finger. See, we're calm here. We're calm here. Don't, don't, don't alert the authorities. It was a joke. It was a joke. I'm fine now. I don't want to harm anybody. I'm not jealous. Whew. I'm not envious at all. I'm totally zen. Totally humble. Look, I have icons. Look, I read my Bible. Whew. Not going to harm anybody here. <laughs>